wasabi guys void here coming back at y'all with another 10 underrated commander cards list honestly i feel like a lot of these cards could see more play in this format and we're going to start off this list with a land here city of shadows from the dark a little bit pricey for a land that is supposedly underrated but what you can do is you get to sacrifice one of your creatures remove it from the game and you get to put a counter on city of shadows and then you get to tap it to add x colorless mana where x is the number of counters on it may not seem like a big deal you have to give up creatures and order to get more mana but in a format like this that is rather slower getting colorless mana is so important i mean there's so many decks that have obviously just exile tokens uh take advantage of that creatures that are just expendable if you can gain control of your opponent's creatures and then exile them with this land that's always fun but just a very good mana producing land and that's what you want out of your lands you want a lot of mana so why not it's not perfect but it definitely could see a lot more play than what it does right now then we have the newest card on this list, which is from Ixalan, Thaumatic Compass that flips into Spires of Araska. Thaumatic Compass is pretty cool. You get to pay three mana and tap it to search your library for a basic land card and you get to put it to your hand. And it does flip when you have seven or more lands at the beginning of your end step. And when it flips, it basically becomes a Maze of Ith. A little bit better though, because it can also tap for mana, unlike Maze of Ith, which cannot. All you need to do is just tap it, and you untap a creature that's attacking you and remove it from combat. Very good in control decks. Any deck where you're behind in total creatures, you're not aggressive. Definitely a useful card. And getting lands is always good. You don't want to miss land drops. Next, we have Luminate Primordial. Absolutely love the primordials this guy is probably one of the most underrated if not the most he essentially is a source to plow shares for each of your opponents and if you're unsure about the primordials they essentially did something dependent on each of your opponents so if you're playing a huge multiplayer game the primordials are much better and this dude is awesome because he can exile one creature for each opponent you have you get to get rid of the best creature each of your opponent has that's just super powerful and yeah they do gain life it's the only downside to swords to plowshares but that's about it just a super good effect it's flickerable so you can constantly remove their best creatures pretty good card then we have time stop one of those cards i've been guilty of forgetting about quite often it's usually because it's six mana a little bit too much mana for what it does but what it does is still very powerful and if you're looking for that disruption type of spell this is really it so if someone wants to use a board wipe, if someone wants to use a massive draw spell, if someone wants to cast their commander, if someone wants to play something, it goes onto the stack, it's exiled, and the turn ends. So time stop is super powerful in just shutting down your opponent's turns, which is ideally what you want to do. In all honesty, there are more powerful options. You may just want to play a much cheaper and a more efficient counter spell than this. It can basically double as a counter spell in most control decks that play it, but it does have the upside of being more versatile, and it usually is pretty hilarious when you play this, and your opponents really have no clue what they're doing. Just a hilarious card. Then we have Sphinx of the Final Word. Super, super powerful in control decks, or just any deck really where you're going up against your opponent's counter spells. It's basically impossible to get rid of because they can't counter it, and they can't really deal with it straight up. It has Hexproof, which is just incredible, and the fact that it makes your spells uncounterable, it's super powerful in combo decks. You don't want any of your, you don't want any parts of your combo being countered, so if you can put this in a specific deck that can win by comboing, you can protect yourself against other control decks in the playgroup, which is super powerful. Uh, on top of that, just a very good Sphinx. We don't have too many good Sphinxes, so if you want to go that route with Unash Sphinx Tribal, this is definitely one to consider. Very powerful. It kind of gives Consecrated Sphinx a run for its money in terms of being a extremely powerful Sphinx. Then we have Knowledge Exploitation. Honestly, not my favorite card, but for what it does, for 7 mana, it is cheaper if you dealt combat damage with a rogue. But if you're unable to do that, it is just 7 mana to look through an opponent's library and pick an instant or sorcery and then just cast it for free without paying its mana cost very similar to bribery which is five mana for creatures it is a lot better than this but you can never underestimate looking getting the option of choosing which opponent you want to look through their libraries and casting just an extremely deadly card that's always good and in certain decks that are all about spells matter 
uh, you get to cast it for free so it is seven mana but look at it this way well that is seven mana but you're using that seven mana for both this spell and the spell that you're casting so it is sort of like a two for one on the seven mana deal there but it is something to keep in mind if you want to go down the road and build some more of those types of decks where you like playing instant and sorceries it matters uh, you have a lot of effects that can trigger off of casting instant or sorceries this isn't a terrible card to consider and then we have infernal darkness very similar to contamination which is just a hellish nightmare to have to go through it makes all lands essentially just tap for black mana this is a little bit different though because contamination you have to sacrifice a creature during your upkeep or else you have to sacrifice contamination with this you have the cumulative upkeep which is a lot harder to pay because it just keeps going up so it is a bit more fair than contamination but for two to three turns or however often you can continue to pay the cumulative upkeep it is still just as much of a pain in the ass as contamination it's just not as many people know about it and then again it is a lot easier for many decks to sacrifice creatures during their upkeep than it is to pay mana but nevertheless a very oppressive black enchantment but then again that's kind of what black does it's about making people suffer really then we have dregs of sorrow black removal is more or less just creature based so if you can get an advantage off of that with this you get to pay x where x is just how many creatures you want to kill they have to be non-black creatures which is kind of a problem i think a lot of people underestimate how relevant that is there are a lot of situations where you're just going to have to get rid of black creatures and you can't really do anything with these types of cards but that's just black removal as a whole there's so many black removal spells that just say destroy target non-black creature but this also gives you the benefit of drawing cards which black removal doesn't do that really at all so you get to pay x into the mana cost you have to pay five of course which is kind of a pain in the ass but if you're able to put a bunch of mana into x you not only get to deal with a, any number of creatures you really want to but you get to also draw that many cards so card draw in black is usually conditional based off of life the fact that you don't have to pay any life is also a huge bonus so you're just paying a ton of mana a decent card but i can definitely understand why people wouldn't play it over things like damnation of course or even toxic deluge much more affordable board wipe effects and then we have altar of bone this isn't necessarily in a lot of Murray's call but you do have to sacrifice a creature in order to search your library for a creature card but tutors are always good in this format i don't think i really need to go too far into explaining why you get to pick out your combo creatures uh, any creature that's really important for your strategy you get to tutor it up there for just two mana yeah you sacrifice a creature but who really cares you're getting what you want from your deck tutors are always awesome in this format keep that in mind but yeah maybe not something that a lot of people know about and then the last card here is Dur Durgar Hedge Mage I don't know how to pronounce that but this guy is awesome if you love those types of creatures like Reclamation Sage that just give you value upon an ETB that you can like flicker, take advantage of. This gives you the ability to destroy a target artifact if you control two or more mountains. And the same is true with enchantments if you control two or more planes. Super powerful on an ETB, getting to destroy up to two. So yeah, even if you just get to destroy an enchantment, it's still worth it. Even if it's just an artifact, it's still worth it. But this is more often than not going to hit both. Uh, especially if you're just playing a Boros deck where you're going to be playing two mountains and two planes. Usually that's the norm. Just having versatility and having the most value for your mana that you're spending is so important. And it's so important about this game. Just mana efficiency, getting the most out of what you spend. And for just three mana you get a 2-2 two -two, which you can flicker, you can bring it back from the graveyard. Bounce it back to your hand, replay it get all that value all over again on a creature because you can just constantly flicker it take advantage of the ETB triggers which is something that so many people take for granted but again I love these creatures that give you value upon entering the battlefield so good but anyway guys that was my list of 10 underrated commander cards hope you enjoyed it 
feel free to leave any suggestions in the comment section below and if you like my content please subscribe like and share definitely appreciate all your support but anyway guys void here signing off you all have a wonderful day